Okay, a lot of the peripheral blood vessel things that we're going to talk about should be pretty um, much of a review for you guys, just a good refresher. Okay, but we're also going to go a little bit deeper into some of the other things and some treatments and everything too. So be sure you pay attention and do um, watch this video in its entirety, even if you think you know all of this, because we are going to hit on some other things that will be on your test. Okay, and you will definitely see this in your practice, and most definitely you'll see this on boards. All right, so thrombophlebitis. Let's break down that word first. All right, whenever you hear the word thrombo, okay, it's talking about a thrombus. See the first bullet point there? That's talking about a clot. Okay, so any clot um, within a vein is a thrombus. Okay, so thrombo, clot. Phlebo is vein. Cool, huh? So clot in a vein, phlebo, itis is inflammation. So anytime you have a clot within a vein with inflammation, it's thrombophlebitis, thrombophlebitis. Cool, right? I love medical terminology. It just makes everything so much easier for us once we learn these, these words, right? Okay, so thrombus is a clot. Um, it commonly affects those deeper veins and the lower extremities, and that's where we get deep vein thrombosis or DVT. Okay, a lot of times you will hear it called DVT. All right, and it's a deep vein thrombosis. Thrombi that are in or above the popliteal vein. Where's the popliteal vein? I hope you know this. It's in the knee. Okay, so thrombi that are in or above the knee are at higher risk for migration into your pulmonary circulatory system. So if they're higher than the knees, Within your leg, they have a higher incidence of moving themselves upward, becoming emboli, all right? Which, side note, the only difference between a thrombus and an embolus is movement. Thrombus is stationary, okay? It's attached itself to that vein, it's not going anywhere. Embolus is a thrombus that has dislodged and starts moving, okay? So a pulmonary embolus is when a thrombus has formed somewhere, anywhere in the body, could be in the legs, could be in the arms, could be somewhere in the body, okay? Thrombus has formed and it dislodges itself and it starts moving and traveling and moving and traveling all the way through the body until it gets to the lungs, okay? Then the pulmonary circulation, those vessels that feed the lungs, okay? And whenever those clot off, it can cause major, major tissue death within the lungs, which can then kill somebody. Very serious. Um, irritating. Um, irritation or injuries in the linings of your veins can cause platelets to go and try to heal and, um, you know, really clot up whatever injury it was. But too many platelets can go to that area, and that's how you get a clot because they'll all aggregate together, trying to clot, 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 but then it, it forms a clot that's not good. A good clot is like when you cut yourself and those platelets go to heal it up, and you end up just with a nice little scar instead of an open, gaping wound. Your platelets do that, which is great, but sometimes your platelets just get a little bit misguided or a little over-eager. They try so hard to fix some kind of irritation or injury that they come together too quickly, form a clot within the vessel. Does that make sense? Um, and then the inflammatory response is initiated. Um, and you see in these pictures here, let me point them out. So here's nice little blood going through. This is normal. And then you get a deep vein thrombosis. Oh no, it's all clotted together. They aren't leaving. They're not flowing through like they need to. It's kind of like when your relatives come to stay and they don't leave, right? This is what it is. So when it, whenever a little piece of that or sometimes the whole thing breaks off, there's your embolus, okay? All right, so factors that can contribute. Bershaw's triad, you have got to remember this. It is going to show up from here to eternity for the rest of your career, Bershaw's triad, all right? These are the main things that contribute to development of a clot within the body, okay? If I hammered that enough, do I need to get my actual hammer and beat? I don't think so. All right, so Bershaw's triad, it can be three things, okay? Triad three, right? Venostasis, that means that you've been too um, immobile for too long, where the veins are not having enough blood flow freely flowing through them and things are allowed to just kind of sit, right? It's kind of like when you become a couch potato, you're not getting up, moving around, exercising, whatever, your blood flow is going, just lay on the couch, but 
you're, you're in stasis, okay? That's full body stasis. But then your veins are also becoming stagnant, all right? That blood is not going to flow through very well. Clot. Altered coagulation. Maybe um, <clears throat> the patient, you know, has been on something that is causing them to clot too much. Maybe they have an excess of vitamin K, okay? Um, whenever you see a patient that's on vitamin K, you need to get concerned for their clotting mechanisms because vitamin K helps a patient clot. K for clot. K -k clot. That's how I remember it anyway. But so maybe there's something going on in the, in the body where they have an excess um, production of platelets or something. They have altered coagulation for some reason. Okay? That can result in a clot or some kind of vein trauma. Whether it's an injury, maybe a, you know, deep cut, um, surgery, they've just had surgery and they're trying to heal and you know their platelets are working overtime to heal that deep wound, um, a broken limb. A lot of different things can happen that can cause trauma to your veins. Okay, so those are the three things. Say them over and over again to yourself and remember that they are Virchow's triad. Venous stasis, altered coagulation, and vein trauma. Okay, inactivity can also um, result in a clot. Reduce cardiac output because everything is slow. And when things move slowly, they have more of a chance to clump together, kind of like traffic, right? You know, in Amarillo, we don't have bad traffic, but I always envision that I'm back in Atlanta and I've got these massive traffic jams, okay? So the highways are like our veins, and the cars, if it's going right, you know, they're flowing through, everybody's going 75, 85 miles per hour. But whenever traffic hits, right? Everything builds up, builds up, builds up, and you get a traffic jam, and it's hard for anything to get back through. That's what happens whenever you have a reduced cardiac output. Everything slows down. You end up with traffic jams in your vessels. Compression of veins. Let's say you've been sitting for a very long time. If you take an eight-hour car, car ride or something, maybe 16-hour car ride, you're sitting down, right? Your legs are bent. That's causing compression in those veins. Okay, so eventually you could form a clot if you already have some kind of altered coagulation or whatever, or if you're just in that spot for a very long time. That's why it's really a good practice before like a 12 or, you know, more hour car ride or flight to take an aspirin before you get on the flight because it helps to thin your blood out and prevent, you know, clotting up. Nice little usable tidbit, okay? Um, injury, because you're, like we said, your platelets are trying to fix it. They can form a clot that way. Um, IV drug use um, or chemicals can also mess with your coagulation and cause clotting. Um, women who take oral contraceptives, we are not entirely sure why, but oral contraceptives have been known to cause a higher incidence of clotting um, in women. So just be aware of that. Um, if you are on oral contraceptives or you have patients who are on oral contraceptives, make sure that you are paying close attention to the signs and symptoms of deep vein thrombosis, either in your legs, arms, or anywhere in your body, and especially be aware of what pulmonary emboli um, signs and symptoms are because it is a massive emergency. All right? We'll talk about that when we eventually get to respiratory, but for now, just know it's a massive emergency and we have got to fix it immediately. So the signs and symptoms, okay? These are the things that you probably know, right? Because we've been taught in general assessment to look for this. Um, the length of the vein is warm, red, swollen, tender, painful. This is a very, very, very bad case scenario here where the leg has gotten so swollen, so red, so inflamed. This is this is bad. Okay. Here is what sometimes you see pretty often. Okay, where this one leg here is much more swollen than the other. You see, it's a little bit more inflamed, aggravated. Um, we check for delayed capillary refill. It's um, it's going to be greater than two seconds whenever we check their capillary refill, and that's going to let us know. Ooh, there's some kind of slowing in their vessels, okay, because the veins eventually will disperse into capillaries, won't they? Well, if there's a clot preventing the blood flow to get to those capillaries, oh yeah, you better believe it's going to be delayed when, um, when you press on their nail bed, whether it's toenail or fingernail. Home and sign. I know we teach you not to do this. Um, it's controversial in different states. I think right now in Amarillo, don't do it. Okay, um, but it changes quite frequently all around the nation. So I don't know where you're going to be practicing nursing. If you need to know how to do 
home and sign and what it represents, but definitely be very cautious if you're ever going to do it. Because when you do home and sign, it can dislodge that clot and cause it to become an embolus and move to your lungs, and that could kill the patient. So be very careful with this. But know that home and sign is pain whenever you dorsiflex the foot. Okay, if you dorsiflex, this is the foot, right? Uh, dorsiflex, they're going to have a lot of pain if they've got a clot. So that's going to tell you they definitely probably have a clot. Okay, diagnostic tests that we run, we just look at signs and symptoms a lot of times and we can know. But a Doppler ultrasound is going to be a definitive test for us, and we're going to be able to visualize um, using the ultrasound. It's just a little handheld Doppler, um, and you rub it along and you can find where that clot is. Um, venography is a um, more expensive test, used probably a lot more rare, a um, lot less frequently. I don't know how I said that, but anyways, it's used a lot less frequently, um, and they inject a radioopaque dye into the patient's veins, and then the dye will flow through, flow through until it reaches the clot and then it stops. Um, and so under the image, we'll be able to see um, where that clot is. <clears throat> to treat it, we want complete rest of that extremity. Okay, do not walk around. Do not move them around. Do not do passive range of motion. Do nothing. Okay, we do not want to dislodge it and cause an embolus. Um, we want to put them on some anticoagulants to prevent further clotting. Um, heparin, Coumadin, Lovenox. Okay, Lovenox is a low molecular form of heparin. Um, always, 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 always check platelets and creatinine clearance before you give Lovenox to a patient. You will find this on your test. You will find this in clinical. You will find this on boards. You will find this in the rest of your practice. You have to check the patient's platelets and creatinine clearance before you give Lovenox. Before you give Coumadin and heparin, you need to check PT and PTT. Okay, cool way to know which one you're checking. Um, H E P A R I N P T T, right? So we have ten fingers. H E P A R I N P T T. Okay. So with heparin, we're checking the P T T. Coumadin, C O U M A D I N P T. So we check the P T with Coumadin. Okay. We need to make sure that everything is in the normal ranges before we give anticoagulants because if they're outside of the normal ranges, we either need to adjust their dose or maybe hold a dose, depending on what the physician cares to do. So we look at their results of their lab work. We give all the information to the physician. If everything is outside of the normal range, then we have to give that information to the physician. If it's within normal range, give the medication as ordered. All right? Um, we need continuous warm wet packs on that extremity just to improve the circulation and it does help with pain relief as well so just try to help the patient as much as you can okay so stay on top of that I know it feels like something extra that you have to do especially when you're out there working you got a ton going on but this is key and it's very important it helps your patient heal helps them feel better um, they eventually might need to do surgery um, to do a thrombectomy where they surgically remove the clot or do a vena cava filter. A vena cava filter is like an umbrella, okay? They in, insert it into the vessel and it looks like this, okay? And there's like slats in there. And so as the blood flows through, it catches the little clot um, as it goes and it breaks it up so that it disperses into normal blood flow. It's pretty cool. Um, let's see. Prevention is really our key. Um, TED hose are very, very important, um, especially if a patient is going to be immobile or following surgery or something. just helps to improve the circulation. We need to teach them to move around after surgery. That is the last thing anybody following surgery wants to do. If you've ever had a family member or you yourself or taking care of a patient previously who's ever had surgery, all they want to do is sleep. They feel terrible. They're miserable. They do not want to get up and move around, but they have to because if they don't get up and move around, then they can end up having that venous stasis, which is part of the Virchow's triad, which then ends up causing clots. Okay? We don't want that. So prevention is key. Get them up, move them around. Not more than what they can tolerate, but as much as possible. Um, we want to avoid extended standing or sitting, like we talked about car rides or plane trips. You know, we want to give ourselves an aspirin before we are going to be on those extended trips if we have to be on them. Otherwise, just avoid them and then get up and move around, move around, move around. Okay? Um, I want you to look in your books on page 330 and read the nursing process because this is such a common problem. You will run into somebody with a DVT at some point regardless of what area of nursing you go into. All right? 
very important that you learn about this. So here's a picture of that vena cava filter inserted into um, a vessel here. Okay, this is the inferior vena cava, and it's preventing um, a clot or an embolus to end up going into um, major vessels and causing major damage. Okay, um, let's pause or stop and start a new video so that you'll um, have more time later on. Okay, I'll see you in a minute.